Hi guys, so are there some cracks appearing in the Tory party's view of Brexit? The Tories are the party of Brexit and since the beginning of the year have attempted to defend leaving the European Union come hell or high water. The message has been consistent since January. Brexit is a success and any problems that exist at the moment have nothing to do with Brexit. But following some high profile stories and the fact that the Office for Budget Responsibilities forecast is that Brexit will be twice as damaging economically as the pandemic, is becoming more and more difficult to defend Brexit. That means that the Tories have to shift gear and it seems to be that. Yes, we're in this mess, but we need to find a way out of it. Neil Parish MP, who used to oppose Brexit, then jumped on board the Brexit bus following the referendum results, of course, let it slip that there's a new narrative. The Conservative Party, and I'll be quite blunt, um, we, have, we are normally a pragmatic party that gets on with government. So it's no good just saying, yes, on, in principle, we don't want any imported labour, we should have enough of our own, but we don't. You know, we, we, we're a million, we reckon we're a million workers short with the ones that have returned from, to, to Europe and people that have decided to retire after, after COVID. If they decide to do that, that's up to them. It's a lifestyle. So, you know, for goodness sake, you know, I, I am just seeing a great in industry and, and great animal welfare being put at risk by the fact we don't have the workers. And I think most people, whether they voted Remain, whether they voted Brexit, they're really not interested anymore. What they're interested in to make sure they got meat on the shelves, good quality meat. Our farmers need to get it into the processors. Otherwise, you know, a lot of egg production is being stopped at the moment. A lot of broiler production is being reduced. So all the time we're exporting uh, and or importing more, exporting our business. Exactly the opposite that what Brexit was to deliver. This has to be welcomed. Finally, the, bet the penny has dropped. But what is the solution? That's the problem here. The Conservative Party know the solution. It means the solution is to rejoin the single market and the customs union. It's to reintroduce freedom of movement. But they don't want to do that because that would be seen as a betrayal of Brexit. It would be a a betrayal so damaging that many people who voted uh, to leave the European Union, who voted for Brexit back in 2016 and Boris Johnson in 2019, uh, would likely switch to other parties, probably UKIP or no doubt if this was taking place, Nigel Farage would make an appearance on the scene once again and he would set up a new party, maybe the re-Brexit party or something like that. Um, and put pressure on the Conservatives to take a, a harder line on this. Once again, Nigel Farage is somebody who likes attention and he doesn't give a crap about Brexit, he doesn't give a crap about the European Union. He sees it as a vehicle uh, for attention, for power, for cash, whatever. And I think that this is something that the Conservatives are afraid of. That's why they're not willing to go that extra mile. But it is interesting that we're starting to see some cracks here. Remember, at the beginning of the year, Brexit is a success. Boris Johnson got Brexit done. Uh, we're not going to be talking about Brexit anymore. Well, we are. We still are because of these the consequences of Brexit. But I, I think there's still some way to go before the Conservatives turn around and say, yes, it has been a failure. Now we have to fix it. Now, this is an opportunity for the Labour Party. The Labour Party need to, in my eyes, uh, take two approaches, one or the other. One is to blame Brexit and say we're going to fix it. The other is to blame Boris Johnson and say we need to replace Boris Johnson. Now, I understand that at the moment Brexit is still quite toxic and many people within the Labour Party don't want to mention the B word and are avoiding the B word in order to uh, present some, alt some alternative. Say, look, we need to attack Boris Johnson. There's no point attacking Brexit because many people still support Brexit or people don't understand how Brexit is causing these problems. But it makes more sense for us to blame Boris Johnson. And I understand why I don't agree with that approach. I do understand it. I, I, I believe instead you should be pointing out that Brexit is the is the the culprit here. Brexit is the problem and you need to provide alternatives. You need to provide solutions because 
blaming Boris Johnson will work for a while. It'll work until Boris Johnson is removed from office, but that will not undo the damage. Replacing Boris Johnson with Rishi Sunak or replacing Boris Johnson with Michael Gove is not going to undo the damage of Brexit. And focusing on just removing Boris Johnson from power isn't going to fix the problem. And it's not going to provide any real solutions. I think the public need to be told what you voted for back in 2016 is causing these problems. Now, the solution is quite simple. We need to rejoin the single market and the customs union. That would undo a lot of this damage. We need to reintroduce freedom of movement. That would undo a lot of this damage too. It's not going to fix the problems completely, but the Labour Party, the opposition parties need to present themselves as the fixers here. We're going to resolve these problems. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.